Okay. So, uh, yeah, my name is John McNamara. I'm a software engineering manager in DPDK, a former developer in DPDK. We're going to talk today about uh, getting your code upstream into DPDK. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, starting with the legal stuff, um, terms and conditions apply, previous performance is no guarantee of future performance, uh, DPDK may cause hair loss in some cases, usually in the case of system integrators. Okay, straight on to that, past that. So, um, who are the contributors to DPDK? Well, this is our agenda, we're what we're going to look at in the next dozen or so slides. Uh, we're going to look at the DPDK community, uh, the life cycle of a patch, and the DPDK uh, ecosystem. So it's mainly to answer a few questions. We've had a lot of questions in the, few, the last few days, and in previous summits as well about people coming and saying, look, we, we have this body of code, we have a Pomo driver, we have a small patch. How do we get it upstream? How, what do we do? So this is going to answer some of those questions. So let's have a, a look at some figures. So um, over the course of DPDK's lifetime, we've had 300 unique contributors. This comes out of the Git log. Um, those contributors have been from 100 different domains, so that's 100 different companies or universities, etc. Typically, we get about 40 new contributions uh, per release. And releases are three to four months, so that means that in that time period we get people come in, they may be contributing a whole new pole mode driver, and they may be there for a few years maintaining that. It may be just one-line uh, fixes that they, they were working on something on the university project, and they saw something, and they pushed something up. Um, typically, we have about 800 uh, merged patches per release, and that's something to bear in mind. So that's 100, 800 patches that get merged. In the last release, it was actually 900. And given that most patches get to about three, V3, V4, that means we have like you know between two and a half and three thousand patches that need to be reviewed in that three to four month period. So that's just something to keep in mind. So these are the contributors by domain. So this is companies, universities, and maybe we could get a show of hands for people who've um, submitted a patch to DPTK. Okay. All right. Okay. Good. Good. Uh, you're in the right place. So, so that, yeah, there's, there's a list here. It's approximately 100 different companies, different domains. And right at the end, you know, your name here. So there's no reason that you, you can't do the same. So to the DPDK community, I think um, in Jim St. Ledger's uh, keynote, if you were here at the very, very start, you got everybody to get, stand up and, and shake hands and just introduce themselves. Because really, this is the DPDK community. This is our people who come to conferences, people who talk in DPDK, people who get on the mailing list and push up patches, submit things, you know, review things. That, that's, that's, that's this group, you know, that's the, these people who are keeping, keeping DPDK going forward. The community is such kind of uh, centers around the mailing lists, um, the main one being the dev mailing list. There's a little screenshot of it there, and anybody who's jumped on and said, oh, I heard about DPDK, let's have a look, and said, oh, they have a mailing list, I'll go on there, and said, what? It's all patches, what's, what's going on? Is there any human interaction here at all? But we have a user's list as well, so for people who are kind of kicking the tires or, or people who just want to ask a frequently asked question, that's, 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 that's the place for it. Nobody's going to throw stones at you for asking questions there. Um, if you want to get straight into development, go, to, go through the dev mailing lists. There's a lot of, co a lot of, uh, a lot of patches there. We have an IRC channel. Um, probably not everybody knows that, even people who are working on DPDK in various things, but we have an IRC channel. It's on Freenode. Hashtag DPDK, you can get on there, you can talk to some people. It's very good for um, interacting with other people, uh, especially coming up to releases or if you're trying to coordinate something across different time zones or different companies. Uh, IRC, for the younger people in the audience who don't know, is, it's, it's kind of like Slack without, without Giphy. Um, so documentation is part of the community. We have uh, you know, lots of uh, documentation online. It's kind of a live documentation along with the code. We have tools like Patchwork, we'll have a look at those in a minute, and uh, testing tools like Coverity. So we'll, we'll have a look at those as we go through the slides. So this is kind of the workflow of contribution. Um, if you're familiar with the kind of kernel uh, mode of operation, you'll be very familiar with the DPDK because it's basically the same thing. We copied it. Uh, so it's, it's like um, maintainers and then subtree maintainers, or so maybe a hierarchy of maintainers, except in DPDK cases, it's, it's somewhat flatter. Uh, we have mailing lists and patches. Um, the patches get reviewed on the mailing list. 
Um, you can ack it, which means the plus one, I, I'm in favor of this going in, uh, or knack it saying, no, I have concerns about this, this has you know, problems that may cause problems over here, this may cause problems on ARM, this may cause problems over here, those type of things. Um, and after reviewing the patches get merged into a subtree, could be the net next one. We have three subtrees at the moment, and uh, where we have the master, obviously, and then we have su three subtrees. We have um, a net next one for all the drivers. We have a vhost and vertio one that Yuanhan, who was on first this morning, maintains. We have a new crypto subtree that Pablo, the um, tallest man in DPDK, but not the tallest man in the room, possibly, is, uh, is the maintainer of. Um, Bruce Richardson, who isn't here presently, maintains the uh, NetNext uh, subtree, and Thomas Modulan maintains the whole thing. So, like like a kernel module, a model, but but smaller, um, uh, and unlike maybe you, models that you may be used to, like uh, GitHub, where you have your forking and your pull requests, it, it's, it's it's somewhat simpler. Okay, so this is what you might actually do. And um, if you have your laptops out and, and you're not reading email, you could actually get a patch up into DPDK in the time that takes me to finish this. It's a typical, as I said, kernel workflow. You clone DPDK, hack away, make your changes, um, put them into Git, into the repository in the normal way. The, the step you may not be familiar with, or you may be, uh, is, is you generally need to, you need to generate some patches. So you, you use Git to do that. You for, use git form a patch, generate out your patches, and then you use something like git send mail to send it up onto the mailing list. Maybe sometimes with a little cover letter, sometimes with just a commit message. Um, advanced users can and probably do those two steps in one go. Um, new users can do it in two steps. That allows you to check your patches, to run some checks against it, make sure everything is OK before you push it up. But if you're confident, you can do it in two, two steps, in one step. Uh, the patches get reviewed generally, um, and then they get, you know, people come back and say, yeah, this is good to go, I act this, then they generally get merged. Anything of a, a norm, of, you know, anything reasonable size will generally pick up a couple of comments, yeah, we, you know, don't look like the way that's done over here, or maybe, maybe this is better renamed over here. A few, a few revisions like that, and you're generally good to go. And as I say, like 800 patches got in in the, um, in, in the last release, 900 in the last release. So you know, it, it's, it's, it's doable. Um, they get merged into subtrees, get merged up. OK, so it's called upstream for a reason. And here we have a friendly maintainer helping a salmon get upstream, I think. Um, I, I Google for this. We, we don't have bears in Ireland. We do have salmon, so I think that's what's going on. Um, anyway, the important thing is to engage early. Engage early with the community. Um, a lot of people, who even, even in the last couple of days, were saying, yeah, we have some code. We want to get up. What do we do? Get on the mailing list. Just say, put a, you can have, if it's, if it's, if it's um, you know, something major, you can have an RFC. Say, look, we want to do this. It's a new pole mode driver. It's going to do this. Or we have an idea for integrating something over here. Um, the um, Open Contrail guys have had an idea there for software TSO. Brilliant. You know, just put up on the mailing list. Um, you won't get flamed. Uh, it's a welcoming community. There's no bears there. Um, there is some guidelines if you're worried about what or the other thing people say is, well, I don't know what the right way to do this is. You know, how, how do you, can you talk us through this or whatever? So we do have quite good guidelines. We have good, good documentation, and, and a large part of the documentation is around contributing, so how to do the various parts. And we, we'll see that in a minute. Uh, we also have a certain number of scripts that you can use to check your patches and to check your commit messages. messages. We, we use, since we're using a kind of a kernel style, kernel coding style, uh, you can use the kernel check patch. Uh, we have it in a, a little wrapper that, that adds on or takes off certain flags. So you can do that. And so you know that when it gets up, the, the reviewer isn't going to say, oh, look, send, you know, reformat this or whatever. So you, you can get a few of those kind of low-hanging fruit out of the way to make the maintainer happy and to, to help things get upstream. Um, OK, so be polite, uh, be patient, be persistent. Uh, it's, it's, it's a welcoming enough community, but I mean, everybody here is a developer, uh, or most people are developers who have used, be uh, familiar with some sort of open source model, and all of them are different. If you're involved in more than one, you'll know that they have different personalities. I, I don't mean 
person's personalities, the, 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 the entire community will have a personality. And there's ways of doing things, and all of you will remember, you know, learning to kind of interact with different communities. The kernel in particular, you know, has, so you, you, know, you know how this works, okay? So be patient. Um, we saw a show of hands for people who had um, uh, patches uh, submitted. Let's have a show of hands for people who've reviewed patches from people outside of their own company. So review patches for people other than colleagues. Okay, it's not the same number of hands we saw early on. Okay, so it helps to review things. And, and we've had people say, oh, we've had patches and it, take, it takes too long to review. It, it comes down to a small number of people, you know, and if we have 900 patches over three months, it, it takes a bit of work to get through those. So if you're waiting for your code to go up, you know, you can generate a little karma by, you know, reviewing other patches. And you might find stuff, you say, oh, okay, so that's how it should be done over here. So that's worth doing. So as I said, we have contributors guidelines. So we have good documentation. I guess most people will know, what, uh, have seen the DPTK documentation. But if you haven't, you can see it from the kind of URL up there. It's dptk.org forward slash doc or docs. Um, I'll have to drop down my glasses to see that. Um, this particular section is, is the contributors guides. And there is a DPTK coding style in there. There's, there's one, a section on ABI. Um, there's a section on documentation, uh, actually how to, how to uh, contribute to the documentation, and there's quite a long one on contributing code to DPDK. So really, everything you need to know in there is quite detailed and has a lot of like little examples here as well. So you know, there, there, there's nothing there to to stop you. Um, so parts of the DPDK ecosystem, uh, we have Patchwork, uh, Common Tool. Uh, as with all tools, you can find your own workflow. Um, this is one that works for some people. This keeps track of patches. It keeps track if, if they've been act reviewed. Um, you can download them in mailbox format. You can download them in, in um, patch format. I, I use this quite a lot with, with a patchwork client, which just allows me to pull them down and merge them straight into, um, in, into uh, my local uh, clone. Um, but as I said, you can find your own uh, working, working methods. Documentation, I touched on that. Uh, good thing about docu DPDK's documentation, from my viewpoint, is that it's live. It's in the repository, either in the form of the API documentation, which is uh, uh, docsgen generated. A lot of you will be familiar with that. But it's generated from the, the comments in the, in the header files. You know, like all API documentation, not always the most interesting read, but it's, 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 it's there. Uh, we have a lot of user guides, and they're written in RST format, which is a, a markup format like Markdown or Perl Pod or all of those. Um, it's most commonly associated with Python, is what the Python documentation is, is written in. It's a text format, simple markup, quite easy to do. Uh, but we can, we can generate nice documents out of it and uh, P PDFs and et cetera. But what's good about it is it's live. So if, if you see um, you know, something you're reading through and said, oh, no, that doesn't quite work, or that parameter uh, is, is slightly wrong, or this mask is slightly wrong. You can actually write a patch and, and send that up. And um, I'm actually the documentation maintainer, so if you send up any patches today, I'll put them straight in. <laughs> so that's guaranteed. Uh, OK. Um, yeah, and submitting patches to the documentation is actually an easy way to, to kind of kick the tires and, and, and get going. And, and especially since um, new eyes generally tend to see things that people who've, who've glossed over the same document several times t tend to miss. Uh, the DPK roadmap, another part of the system. This is um, uh, Tim did a, a readout of this uh, the other day. Uh, it's a good feature, DPK, that you will know when all the releases are coming up. So uh, there we can see the, the, the um, three releases that came out this year, 2.2. .2, then we moved it to the Ubuntu naming system, 16.07, uh, uh, so year 16, month 7. The next one will be coming out in, you can guess it, November. And then we have four next year. So if you miss one slot, you're guaranteed to know. Or you can you know, say, OK, this is going to take us about six months to get going. We can say, OK, let's, let's target DPTA 1705, something like that. And we have a roadmap. Generally, the roadmap for the next release is quite detailed. And then we have slightly less detail because it'll be more in flux for, for, for the next release. So at the moment, we have, and you can see a little bit of it there, the roadmap for 16. 11, and we have uh, a roadmap just below that for 17.02. And all of the dates of the releases are in that same page. You can see, you can find the URL off the uh, development page on dpdk.org. Uh, 
Uh, and there's a, there's a link down there. Obviously, you can't click on the links on the screen, but if you download the slides, you can click on the links. Uh, testing. OK, so um, a lot of testing is done by Intel uh, at the moment. Uh, uh, we, we're trying to move it towards maybe a more public, public model. Uh, we do a lot of testing. Um, Waterman, who's our SDV system test and validation lead, is, is here, is in the audience, I'm not sure where he is. Um, but he has a biggish team, and they're, they're working on lots of OSs, lots of different hardware. You know, if they, they, they spend about three solid weeks going through a release before it gets out the door. So there's a lot of work done. Uh, there, there's a certain amount of automation of pushing out patches. So if you submit a patch and it breaks a compilation on something that you didn't have access to or whatever, you should get an email about that. We'd like it to be a bit more public, maybe, and, and that's maybe something that we'll, 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 we'll look to in 2017. Um, same way with a bug tracker. We don't currently have a public bug, bug tracker. We were, we're looking into that. Uh, generally not the type of thing that developers are screaming for all the time. We want a bug tracker, but nevertheless. Uh, we also have static code analysis via Coverity. Uh, and over about the last year or so, uh, we started with, like any project, um, a reasonable number of, of defects that are detected by static code analysis. In the last six months or so, we've worked very hard on those, just closing them out. and. And, and, and trying to put in fixes and also to you know, prompt people in, in, in the community. So generally, if you sit, send up a patch, it gets merged in. And we run this about once a week. Um, and, and if your patch put that in, you'll get a, a polite email saying, this, this, this introduced the following bug based on, on, on our following defect based on uh, git blame. Uh, can you review it? If it's a false positive, mark it as false positive. If it's not. Let's, let's, let's have a repatch. And um, um, Stephen, I see him in the audience there, was, ver was very good at prompting people to get on board here. And, and, and he closed a lot of uh, these defects on his own. Uh, so another aspect of the, the ecosystem, and we're coming to the end here, is uh, things around um, the ABI uh, and, and stable releases. So we have ABI get, uh, guidelines, and ABI is very important for our downstream consumers, um, the OSVs, uh, the, open, uh, sort, uh, the operating system vendors, and, and also um, pro other projects such as um, OVS. You've heard OVS mentioned here um, you know, 20 or 30 times today even. Uh, it's a big consumer of DPDK. We need to keep things uh, ABI and API compatible so that, you know, you know, that when they go to take the next release, if, if DPDK it works for them. Uh, we've worked reasonably hard on this. We could do better on this. Um, but uh, you know, the guidelines are there. People are prompted to follow them. And, 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 and we should, because it, 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 it'll, it'll allow us to backport patches and allow us to have stability going forward. Stable le releases and long-term support. So these are two things that are, are kind of new. We had a, a lot of discussion over the last few months about this. And people in the past have asked for um, a certain amount of, of, of either stable releases or, or long-term stable releases. So the difference here is a stable release is we take, I'll stop doing that, but we'll take a, a release such as 16.07. And, and we'll make it stable for generally one release cycle. So if bugs appear in 1611, we will get them back ported into 1607. That allows for somebody who is integrating DPDK with OVS into an open stack environment to say, OK, I wanted that version of DPDK with this version of OVS, but now DPDK has this bug. And when, do, when can I get that fixed? Prior to this, the answer to that would be 1611. That's the next release that will include that bug fix. But now we can bug backport these, or we're going to attempt to bug past, uh, backport these to allow people to say, OK, I have a 1607 plus this 160701, something like that. So we're starting th that in this release. Yu Wan Han, uh, who I mentioned earlier, uh, as one of the subtree maintainers, is also maintaining this stable release. So we're going to see how that works out. And that's going to be a trial for a long-term support, which will be over a longer period, two years. Um, and where we'll backport uh, bug fixes, maintain ABI, and, and maybe use that as a target that the um, um, OS, OSVs can pick up. Um, 
So yeah, it, that's targeted for 16 and 11. It's possible we could do it for 16. We can take the work that we've done for uh, on the stable release of 16.07 and say no, 16.07 is the is the stable release. That'll be decided. We're, we're we're trying to work through this. We're going to see how it works out. So there's a little bit of trial and error going on here. Okay, so um, that takes us uh, to the end. That was a little whistle stop tour. Um, but as I said, in summary, you know, 300 people have managed to get their patches upstream. Um, in the last release, 40 new people did. There's a lot of patches go up there. You know, it's, it's, it's doable. Um, not everything is the same. You know, getting a pole mode driver up takes a bit more work than just a, a single line patch. Or, you know, uh, a new library will take a bit of a discussion because obviously people will want to do things. The RFCs are good for that. We saw one yesterday from um, uh, Jaron. Um, so, you know, there, we, we've, we had one on the, uh, the, the um, consistent filter API or generic filter API as well. And, and those, those get really good discussions and, you know, allow us to, when we, when we start to execute on a new library or a new set of APIs, you know, that's something that'll, uh, that everybody will find useful rather than, you know, one particular person saying, okay, this is where we're going and, 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 and everybody else having to deal with that. Okay, so questions? And here, I just wait for the get your microphone. We have a microphone. <laughs> yeah. So if I'm just getting started, what would be a good place to start? Is it contributing to a documentation or looking for open bugs? Or okay. Yeah. Good place to start. Yeah. So a good place to start is is to to yeah definitely the contributors guidelines. Um, I think if you printed it out, it'd be it'd be something like ten pages. So it's quite detailed. Um, there are a lot of simple things, and if you're used to, say, interacting with the kernel, uh, you'd, you'd be loose, used to a lot of this as well. But that's a good place to start. And then if you just want to, if you have some code, you know, you can, if you have a, something you need to fix or whatever, then, you know, uh, you can do that. Or you can look through the documentation, find something that's, that's you know, misspelled or incorrect, and, and push up a patch for that. Um, so, yeah, yeah it's a, the, the computer's guidelines is, is, is the best place to start, yeah. Okay. Questions? John, any asks you have of the community? Um, well, yeah, I touched them on the reviewing. You know, we, we do get complaints from people that oh, it's this patch is up and you know it's been, been sitting there for a while. But we have a limited number of reviewers. You know, I I, I, can, I can see some, <laughs> some of them in the audience, people who who work very hard and review other people's patches, but. Um, I think that's something, you know, in our, if, if we're going to go forward at, at, at this type of rate of 800, nine, eight to 900 patches per release every three months, then, you know, if we, it, it, like one of the last talks that we hope the DPK community needs, will continue to grow. And we are, everybody in this room, I'm sure, hopes that the DPK community will continue to grow. But we need a bit of, um, you know, additional people doing work, not just related to, to, to their own set of patches that they need to get in. Um, yeah, that's, I think that's maybe the main thing. Right, thanks, Seth. Okay. <laughs>